Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a very exciting video. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I finally sat down and did this because I've been making excuses since 2017. That's the last time I filmed my eyeshadow palette collection. And this weekend I got my nails done and I wanted to film it from like you guys looking at my palettes, not with me on the screen. So I knew my hands were gonna be in the video and I was like, you know what? Now that my nails are done, I have no excuse, so I sat down and I filmed it, you guys. My video is over an hour long, so if you've been dying to see my eyeshadow palette collection, grab yourself a snack, or maybe you need to clean your house. Might be a good time to watch this video. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. I don't feel like I need to give a disclaimer because my channel is full of eyeshadow palettes, you guys know it. This is my favorite thing when it comes to collecting makeup is eyeshadow palettes. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Leave me a comment. Tell me your favorite palette. You guys know I love talking to you down there. And if I miss anything, it is what it is and I will include it in a future video and I didn't include my single shadows. I'm gonna do a separate video on my eyeshadow singles collection because that's gonna be another hour and I didn't want to do that to you guys. So without further blabbering, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you at the end. So this is my Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. I have always bought Anastasia palettes and I have decluttered a few in my collection. This is one of the older ones that's left. This palette has seen quite a lot of action in my collection and I still reach for this one when I'm doing makeup on other people as well. So I'm definitely keeping this palette. Next is my ABH Norvina palette. I really like this one as well. At first I wasn't so sure about it, but now that I have it in my collection, I really enjoy it, mostly for the neutral shades. I feel like when I think of Norina, I think more of the Riviera palette. Like I feel like that's more her vibe, so I'm kind of confused why this one is called the Norvina, but you know, I don't actually know Norvina, so I'm just basing this off of the aesthetic she puts out on Instagram, but yeah, you're gonna see pretty much all the Anastasia palettes. The next one I have, I keep these all together because they're like my top tier palettes. This is the Soft Glam palette by Anastasia. I believe this came out last year and honestly this is one of my favorite Anastasia palettes. This one could easily replace the Modern Renaissance in my collection. I feel like neutrals are definitely back and these are nice and buttery. Again, I love to use this when I do other people's makeup as well. Here are some other palettes that I keep in my top shelf of palettes. This is the Pat McGrath Holiday Palette. This is the red one. Oh my gosh. I think you can still get your hands on this. If you can, I would pick this up. This red shade in here is so fun. Sorry, I'm pointing. <laughs> this one right here is so pretty. It kind of reminds me of a shade in the Too Faced uh, Gingerbread Palette, but I love the Pat McGrath formula so much better. Some people don't love this packaging, the cardboard packaging, but it doesn't bother me. I know Georgia Harris has depotted these, so if you wanna depot them, you can too. This one is my least favorite of the holiday palettes. Just kind of, you know, not my favorite shades, and these are all shimmer shades as well. So I did not buy any of her eyeshadow singles because I prefer her palettes. And then here is my second favorite palette from the holiday collection. This is the one called the Subliminal. And this blue shade in here is gorgeous. I'm not gonna swatch any of my palettes today, otherwise we'd be here for hours. Here's another palette that sits in my top shelf. This is the Christmas Morning Palette by Give Me Glow Cosmetics. Oh my gosh, this was a holiday 20. 18 palette and it's gorgeous. I think this is gonna come out again for holiday 2019. If you can get your hands on it, I would definitely recommend. Beautiful palette. Next one, this is kind of an oldie but a goodie. This is the Dose of Colors X I Love Zara E collab. This was kind of the palette that made me fall in love with Dose of Colors eyeshadow formula. It's beautiful, it's creamy. I love how small this palette is. I definitely feel like I'm gonna take this traveling with me this year, either when I go to Nashville or Arizona. And you guys know I'm a sucker for palm print, so I love this guy a lot. Here is just like a basic all matte palette. This is a Viseart palette. This is the 
warm matte palette. I've had this one in my collection for quite some time. I'm never gonna get rid of this palette because it's just a great neutral palette and I can use this for all types of looks. I do love Huda's eyeshadow palettes, especially these bigger ones. So this is her new nudes palette. This came out last year. Oh my gosh, it's such a beautiful palette. At first I didn't think I would enjoy this, but it's honestly such a beautiful palette. Again, this one is my top in my top shelf palette drawer and just gorgeous every day. If I was a bridal makeup artist, I would totally pick this up. I just love this so much. I wish I could use it more. Um, but yeah, I, I love that a lot. And then I have this guy, the Desert Dusks palette. This is another gorgeous palette. I love the mauve purpley vibes in here. And oh my gosh, it's just a stunning palette. I love these big palettes by Huda. I already said it, but I'll say it again. And this shade right here is so stunning. And some of the shimmers in here are beautiful as well. So really love that guy. And then the first ever Huda palette that came out, this is the Textured Shadows, the, what was this called? The Rose Gold palette. This is actually the original she did reformulated. And I honestly did pick up the reformulated one as well. I need to grab it somewhere in here. I'll show it to you guys, but this is my original Huda Rose Gold palette. and. This one is stunning. I haven't actually used my new one yet, but I think that when I do, I'm gonna love it just as much as I love these three. Next, I have two palettes by Dominique Cosmetics. I also have her Berries and Cream palette somewhere, so you guys will see that later. This is the Latte palette. This is the first one she came out with. I wasn't very sure of the formula, obviously, being as they were a new indie brand, I was, you know, very hesitant to pick it up, but I was able to pick it up during an Ulta 20% off coupon, and I really like it. This is a really beautiful palette. And then the first one I ever bought was this guy, actually. This is the Lemonade palette, and there is a little bit of controversy when this one launched she did have some issues with the formula and so she actually sent out replacements to people with the faulty palettes and so I was able to get a replacement palette I know some people that bought the palette at Sephora also had trouble with it so it's kind of a bummer because I feel like because of all the drama with this palette a lot of people were kind of put off by the palette but I think it's a beautiful palette I love shades like this like an almost mustard yellow you guys know yellow is just like the color it's like the one everyone's trying to perfect and I feel like I haven't really found my perfect yellow for tan skin yet But anyway, love these two as well Okay, here is another dose of colors palette and I wasn't planning on buying this at first, but Honestly, like I said, the Dose of Colors Shimmer Formula is so good. This is the Frankation palette. This is Desi X Katie collab round two. The round one palette sucks so bad. Luckily, Dose of Colors let me return that one because I just thought the quality was so, so bad. This one is so much more amazing and you can definitely score this one on sale. So if you've been eyeing this, definitely know that I love it and I think you should buy it. Also, the packaging in this is so so beautiful. Next palette is the only melt palette I have. This is the Smoke Sessions palette and this is actually restocking um, April 20th. So if you get a chance to pick this up, I would totally recommend it. This palette does have a very um, unstable formula, so you'd have to be very careful with it. I feel like if I drop this, it's gonna be game over. But these green shades are so stunning. Like, this is like my dream green palette because there's like the goldy greens and then the tealy greens and it's just a beautiful green palette. So I love this very much and I would totally recommend it if you are a green lover. Obviously, I don't like smoke pot, but I don't really care that the theme is smoke session. I just bought it because I love the eyeshadows so much. Here is my only Sydney Grace palette. That was a trick because they usually do single shadows. So this is their first ever eyeshadow palette. It is the Autumn Rain palette. This came out last year. Oh my gosh, it's so, so beautiful. Sydney Grace has one of the best eyeshadow formulas I've ever tried. And I just think this is a beautiful palette and I can't wait for them to come out with more things in 2019. But I love this so much and this is really cute packaging. And this one is a little bit broken. I need to glue the pans in, but this is my Bright Lights or Bright Editorials palette palette by Viseart. I really like this. I don't get enough use out of this palette, but it is beautiful and matte and just a great go-to formula in my collection. I used to have 
four Viseart palettes, but I got rid of the dark mattes palette just because I never used it, but I kept this one because I like it so much. This is my only Natasha Denona palette. I have tried a few of our other palettes in the past, but this is the only one that has definitely felt like it was worth the money. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. If I could just use one palette every day for the rest of my life, this one would be a top contender because it's got some beautiful duochromes, some pigmented metallics, some beautiful matte shades. Oh my gosh, I love this shade Dijon, I believe it's called. And it's just a beautiful palette with different textures. And I don't know, if you're an eyeshadow junkie and you love gold like me, you would totally enjoy this. Hey, <laughs> it's a beautiful palette. I'm so glad I bought this. Okay, this is a little baby palette and this is the only Charlotte Tilbury thing I own. Again, this is another beautiful palette or quad for people with really medium or light skin tones. This one doesn't show up on me as much as I would like, but oh my gosh, every time I use this on a friend, it just looks so stunning, so if you are of a lighter complexion and you've had, the, had your eye on the Pillow Talk quad, I would totally recommend picking it up because it is really stunning. This shimmer shade just melts into your skin and it's a nice small compact, so totally worth having. Okay guys, here is a newer palette to my collection. I just posted a review on this. This is the Colored Rain Safari Rain Palette. I was so excited for this palette when it was announced. This beautiful packaging is so unique and just reminds me of, honestly kind of reminds me of those beautiful um, parrots. I can't remember what they're called, but those beautiful colorful birds. But this palette oh my gosh it's so stunning colored rain has one of my favorite formulas when it comes to indie makeup as well just so buttery and pigmented stunning stunning shadows their mattes are so blendable i have so many colored rain shadows in my collection but i just wanted to show you guys this one because it's in my top shelf of eyeshadow palettes as well okay this is my all-time favorite juvia's place palette unless they come out with something in the future this is the tribe palette Oh my goodness, it's so stunning. I actually have a full Juvia's Place eyeshadow palette collection video that you guys can watch. My husband's in that video with me. Um, I have since decluttered some of the Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes because I felt like I had all of their palettes but they were not getting enough use in my collection. So I decided to declutter them and pass them on um, so other people could give them more loving than I could. Uh, but I recently swatched this palette because I compared it to the Color Rain Safari Rain eyeshadow palette and they're honestly slim similar but going back and swatching this just reminded me so much how much I love this palette and it's just it's stunning look at this packaging it's so beautiful next is oh my gosh this is Paulina Beauty she is a youtuber here on YouTube. <laughs> she makes beauty videos and she is my friend from Sweden. I love her so much. This is her palette that she came out with um, with Blush Tribe and it has some gorgeous greens and pinks and purples. This is totally Paulina in a palette. I can tell you that much. Girl loves greens so I'm so glad that she put some beautiful greens in this palette and this definitely doesn't get enough love from me. I need to use it more but I will never get rid of this because Obviously, every time I see the cover, it reminds me of Paulina, and I'm so proud of her. And yeah, love this palette so much. This is Give Me Glow's Summer Palette from like two years ago. So beautiful. This is a Summer Vibes palette. Oh my gosh, if you get a chance to pick this up, you totally should. I think they're also doing individual shadows from this particular palette, but these two shades are such standout shades. I'm not going to include any of my single eyeshadows in this video because then we would also be here for a really long time. So I will do a separate video showing you guys my single eyeshadow collection. And I'm still waiting on a few things to come to. I've been putting this video off for so long because every time I want to film it, I feel like, oh, I should just wait until I get that order, or this order, or that thing. And I finally decided, like, enough is enough. You're going to film an eyeshadow palette collection video um, so we can all move on with our lives. But I love this palette so much, and I'm hoping to whip it out this summer and use it some more. Okay, the last palette in my top shelf is the Gimme Glow Staple Palette. Also, this one needs to get more love from me, but this is one of the first palettes they ever came out with. So many beautiful shades, and they did reformulate this, and I did get the reformulated version. So if some of you have the older version, it might look a little bit different from this one. But again, this is a stunning palette. 
I want to swatch these shimmer so badly for you guys, but I'm sure I have swatch party videos of all of these palettes already. So you guys, I have tons of playlists on my channel and they're sorted by brand. So if you're ever curious about a particular brand, just go to my main page and then just search for that brand and the playlist will come up and you can just watch all the videos I have on the particular brand. Okay, so something else you should know about me, I have eyeshadow palettes all over this room, so I'm literally just grabbing from all over the place. I wanted to do it by brand, but I just... I figured that if I tried to do it by brand, I was just giving myself more excuses to put off this video, so we're just gonna go with it. So this is my little Zodiac palette collection from BH Cosmetics. This is Pisces. This is the one they came out for the month of March, April, I don't even know. Pisces, it's gorgeous, it's green. I recently made a little swatchy party video with these and you guys, all a few of you commented about how you think these palettes are so underrated and people don't give them enough credit on YouTube. I couldn't agree more, so I wanna give these palettes a shout out again here. They're so nice and you can pick them up on sale. This is Capricorn, which is my birth month and I don't think this is a horrible palette. I actually re just recently bought this for a friend as a birthday gift because I think it's a really nice neutral palette and sometimes that's all you need in life. And then this is Aquarius, the, I don't know what month this is for. Was this March? I don't know, you guys. And I think this is beautiful as well. I have not worn this on my eyes yet, but I intend to. And then the most recent one that just came in the mail is Aries and this is April. I believe, and it's kind of a red neutrally palette. Again, these aren't like revolutionary color-wise, but I feel like you get really good bang for your buck, and there's a giant highlighter in the middle, and these shadows honestly have such good formula. So even if you're a beginner, I feel like you can totally relate to a palette like this, and it's not huge and bulky, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg, and yeah, I'm really excited to see what their other Zodiacs look like. They have this really cute, oh, here. They have this really cute detail um, on the side, so I think they'll do maybe like a, you know, collection or like a collector's edition at the end of the year um, where you can buy all of these. But I think these are really adorable. And yeah, if you have a friend um, that isn't all about makeup like some of us here on YouTube are, I would consider picking this up because I think it's a good gift. Okay, here's another palette I haven't shown really on my channel except probably in a haul video. This is the Lethal Cosmetics. I don't know what this collection is called, but this is a German indie brand, I believe. They have really great customer service and really quick shipping. I was really attracted to this, this row, basically, which is why I bought this palette, but I have their... Um, they have another palette that's somewhere in my collection that I'll show you and I really enjoyed that one so I did not hesitate to pick this one up. I can promise you there's going to be way more Colourpop in this video but this is one of my newer Colourpop palettes. This is the Disney Willens palette and honestly I kind of bought this because of the completionist in me. I have the Princess palette, I never really use it and I just felt like I needed to have this one too. I feel really dumb that I didn't go into store and check it out. I just ordered it online and I feel like if I had seen this in person before I purchased it, I probably would have been able to talk myself out of it. So anyway, I have it, it's here and hopefully I'll be able to review it for you guys shortly. I also have the brown sugar palette. This was another palette that I just kind of bought because it was on sale or something. And another underrated neutral palette reminds me very much of the Zodiac Capricorn palette by BH Cosmetics. And I just think this palette is gorgeous. I totally plan on using this on other people. I have some wedding makeup and some prom makeup to do. And I just feel like this is a great neutral palette for those types of events. And then another cute little nine pan palette that ColourPop just launched is the Just My Luck palette. Again, another palette that has not really made it onto my channel yet, um, but it's so beautiful and I cannot wait to play with this guy. Another palette you guys might have not seen yet on my channel is the Sweet Talk palette by ColourPop. This is their spring palette. This one honestly isn't the greatest with my skin tone, but I was so curious about the Super Shocks and the pressed glitters that they have in this palette that I decided to buy it and I pretty much buy all the eyeshadow palettes that color oops that color pop comes out with I can't tell you the last time I skipped out on one of their eyeshadow palettes here's a palette I just showed in my March makeup haul this is the Mickey 
collab with Dose of Colors. Again, this was kind of a packaging buy. These shades aren't really my vibes at all. I don't know why I put this back in the box, but let me just get it out of here. So this is what the packaging looks like. And here are what the shades look like. Definitely not me shades. It was kind of one of those things where it launched and then it went out of stock. And I thought it was never going to come back. And then they restocked it. And so I was like, oh, let me buy it. It's so cute. And then they actually came out with a mini collection. So I think they were just trying to drive like some hype into the collab, which was kind of irritating. I don't know. I got tricked, you guys. I got tricked. I don't see myself using this. I just bought it and that's not a good habit, but we'll see. I'll, I'll maybe try it out. I don't know. We'll see. Here is a palette that everyone is kind of humming and hawing about, mostly because of the weird packaging that BH Cosmetics did with a channel called Daisy Marquez, I believe. I was just so attracted to these two shades here that I picked it up. I haven't really worn this on my eyes yet. I did swatch it for my channel, and yeah, I, I need to use it, and then I will review it for you guys. But I thought the packaging was kind of different and fun for BH, so I picked it up. Here is another BH palette that you guys really haven't seen too much of on my channel. It's round two with It's My Ray Ray, so it's another collab. And I think this is like a perfect palette extension to her current BH palette or the first one she did because that one's more neutrals. So I love that she just did a nice slim little palette with a bunch of like pops of color. I think that was really smart of her to do. Also, you can get these on like Ulta if you don't want to buy it from BH which I wish I had known they were coming to Ulta, so I could have just bought them on there with my points, but c'est la vie, and uh, here it is. So yeah, I really liked the first palette, so I anticipate that I will like the second one as well. Okay, so I kind of forgot I own this, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury, is it called? Oh, the Icon palette, and this came out, what, like last month or so, and it's a beautiful limited edition palette by Charlotte Tilbury. Remember I showed you guys a Pillow Talk palette? I loved the formula, just didn't think those shades were bright enough to stand out on my skin tone so when I saw this was coming out I grabbed it and it's honestly a beautiful palette this is one of those palettes that you can use on the day-to-day -day. you can use it if you're going to an event it's just a beautiful palette almost feels like it will be so good for red carpet makeup because it has an impact but it's not like over the top crazy I love this packaging it's so nice and sleek again I might use this for upcoming event or prom type makeup that I plan on doing and yeah it's just a beautiful palette and I love it very much here is a palette you guys might have recently seen an eye look that I did with this one on my channel this is the Violet Voss sugar crystal palette and I haven't bought a palette from Violet Voss in a while so I was very excited when they came out with this uber colorful palette kind of just reminds me of Easter and I think it's beautiful I love the idea and here is the back of the palette and there's a matte row and a shimmer row and then like a duochrome row so very cute stuff. Here is a palette that I used to own or I bought it right away when it launched and I didn't think it was that great so I was like no thank you and I returned it and then um, Macy's and Alta had it on sale for like under $30 so I grabbed it because I was like I really liked the shimmers I just didn't love the mattes and I just didn't want to keep a palette that I didn't love so I returned it but yeah I bought it back and I thought again this would be a really nice palette to use for events or proms and things like that you guys all know what the Soul Tree palette looks like right so I'm not going to take it out of the packaging but just know that I have it and uh, if you can score it on sale I think it's great next palette is the newest Anastasia palette this is the Riviera by Anastasia I was talking about this earlier I haven't reviewed this on my channel yet but honestly I feel like this is one of those palettes I would rather take back to the store. I don't love, love, love the formula. I think the eyeshadows are pretty shades, but ooh, I don't know. The matte, the shimmers are very, very crumbly, which usually I feel like I can get Anastasia eyeshadows to foil really easily. So I'm a little bit confused about why they're so crumbly. I've heard mixed reviews from the few people's reviews that I have watched. So I think it's really interesting how... You know, there's so much hype 
about a new palette and then once you actually play with it a few times you're like hmm maybe this is not as good as I thought it was going to be okay here is a, another palette I feel like is a little secret in my collection but this is the KKW classic blossom palette I buy these when I can get them like on a discount or like when she does free shipping and stuff like that Kim Kardashian's makeup line is a little bit outrageously priced so I refuse to pay full price and yeah I haven't ever actually reviewed any of her palettes I do have have pretty much all of them and I never actually have used this except like yesterday I finally used it for the first time and it was beautiful again another one that would be great I think for bridal or prom because it's subtle it's not too like blinding crazy shimmery but it does still have a beautiful impact so I think I'm definitely gonna get more use out of this than I thought okay here is another palette that I don't use enough this is a blush dry palette called the fall fusion palette I bought this mostly because they named a shade after Angelica and Paulina in here um, but honestly I feel like if I was honest with myself I could probably declutter this um, so I might do that actually because it's okay, but it's not like a palette I'm grabbing for all the time And I think this is limited edition, so I don't think you can get it anymore Okay, here is the first ever blush chart palette that came out This is a blossom palette and I know a lot of youtubers on YouTube. I keep saying that um, really like this palette and have you know reviewed this palette and stuff like that and again this is one of those palettes that I bought and I never used so it is untouched and it's just sitting here so I need to get to it I don't think I'm gonna declutter this one because I do want to try it because these blue green shades are really beautiful and I know this was like Kelly Gooch last year was only buying three eyeshadow palettes and this was one of the palettes she bought and she had so many good things to say about it that I feel like i I have it so I should really review it for you guys as well but uh, yeah this is like some of the next palettes I'm going to show you is like definitely like the walk of shame palettes because I haven't used them. <laughs> okay so here is the new Huda palette again I bought this last year when I was in the cities me and my best friend went to a Beyonce concert and it wasn't available online so the Sephora I walked into happened to have like one left and so I was like give it to me and I bought it and it's untouched so yeah don't judge me um, but yeah, the next few palettes are all going to be like palettes I've like barely touched or swatched or anything like that. But I love this new packaging and I know these shimmers are gorgeous. So I really just need to get this on my eyeballs. Okay, here is the Blush Tribe Hasina 2 palette. Another beautiful green blue palette. This one is nice as well. The only thing with Blush Tribe is that they do ship from the UK. So you can't get a palette from them in a hurry you know there is a little bit of a weight with them so I probably won't buy from them in a while and I haven't really used these enough I mean I think it's a beautiful idea and I did buy the certify affinity 2 which is another like green blue palette and these two brands certify and blush tribe are run by sisters so I feel like there's a lot of similarities they definitely claim there aren't but uh, that's my alleged speculation on these okay here is a oh I think I'm gonna put this in with my singles look at this this is a collection I picked up from love Lux beauty I think this was a mistake I need to declutter this because I'm scared to put this on my eyes but I'm gonna put this in with my single shadows and show it to you guys then. Buyer beware. Okay, this next guy is the BH Cosmetics Zodiacs Love Signs palette. So this is like the bigger one. Sorry, it's not in a sleeve. I keep trying to slide it out, but this one is gorgeous. Again, not use this enough to review it on my channel yet, but just from how much I love the first 24 pan palette, I know I'm gonna love this one. Ah, uh, that shade right now is like calling to me, so. Yeah, let me know if you guys want to see reviews on any of the palettes I show you today. If I already have them, I'll link them for you guys. But, oh my gosh, this teal shade was like calling my name when they were talking about this launch. So, I have it. I haven't really ever shown it on my channel, but 
Yes, it's coming. Okay, here is another collection of palettes that I honestly was thinking to myself the other day. I was like, I should just really declutter these. I don't feel like I'm gonna use any of these. It was one of those things I bought because of the hype. And you guys, I've like never used these palettes. Like some of them I've definitely never used. Like this one is definitely brand new. So I don't know, maybe I should do a giveaway or something, but I just feel like I don't love this formula. Not as much as I like the original Jaclyn Hill palette. These ones definitely felt more hard pressed and I don't know, they were just weird. And then they had that whole controversy with the palettes and I don't know. And these shades like, they really look like the the leftover shades. I mean, that's basically what this palette was, was leftover shades. She said that she had in a vault and she created this whole vault concept and it was like, oh my gosh, my rent is due. Oh my God, me and my husband are getting divorced and I need money. So Morphe, let me just spit out a collab with you guys. Oh my God, my billion dollar closet needs another Gucci bag. So Morphe, can we collab? <laughs> I'm an asshole. Um, but this presentation is gorgeous. Obviously, Jaclyn Hill never disappoints. I used to love her so much, you guys. It's just insane how little I care about Morphe and Jaclyn Hill these days. Okay, here's another palette that was sort of a waste of money. I don't love this formula, I really don't. I know a lot of people hype up the Sugar Fill formula and say they are the bee's knees, but to me, there's other palettes out on the market that I would much rather spend this type of money on. So if you've been contemplating Sugar Pill or you've been hearing like really, really good things from your favorite YouTubers, what I would recommend doing is buying one shade from Beautylish, trying out the formula and then investing in more shades or you're gonna end up with like a $130 palette that you think is okay. Here's another embarrassing palette in my collection. I love Mean Girls so much, and I still have not reviewed the Burn Book palette. I did do a swatch party video on these shadows a while ago, but I have not put these on my eyes or tested out anything. So I can't tell you anything about the formula and how it wears. This is by Storybook Cosmetics. It's an indie brand and they sell this particular brand on Ulta.com. Okay guys, here is another unused palette. This is from Pinky Rose. I bought this originally before everyone was kind of falling over the Pinky Rose hype and uh, I never got around to using it. So here it sits and Hopefully we will someday, but there is that. Another palette I've never used, and I already ordered another palette from them, even though I tried to tell myself, Karen, oh shit, <laughs> don't buy any more palettes until you've used them. Looks like the green one is actually loose. I should really be careful. Okay, I'm just gonna swatch it. That's a really pretty green. I do feel like this formula reminds me of the blush stripe formula though. I know people say they're different, but to me it feels similar. So this is Certifies All Matte Colorful Palette and it's beautiful, right? And I totally bought it and never used it. So yeah, I need to get on that. Okay, here are my other two KKW palettes. This is the collab with Mario. Was this the first palette she came out with? I think it was. I love Mario so much, Makeup by Mario. On uh, Instagram, he is a celebrity makeup artist and I actually went to his ma master class in Chicago in 2016, right before my wedding. It was really fun. Uh, this is KKW's classic palette and I have two friends in Sri Lanka that are like obsessed with KKW's eyeshadow palettes. So every time I see them buying a new one, I'm like, oh, I should try that because Nethmi and Nisha love these palettes so, so much. So. That's how I have all the KKW palettes, even though I feel like they don't get any use from me. This is another neutral one. I think I'm gonna pull this out again and try to use this for maybe prom or wedding makeup, um, but I love her aesthetic. It's very like subtle and beautiful and yeah, subtle, which is not like the Kardashians at all. Okay, this palette has survived quite a few eyeshadow declutters. This was when I was really into trying indie brands and just bought like every brand I saw. Glowed Up Cosmetics um, Into the Sun palette and I just thought it was so beautiful at the time. Look at that yellow, it's like matches my nails. So hopefully you guys might see this on my channel, otherwise I'm decluttering it. Oh my gosh, I need to like get myself together. Next is another palette that I've never used. I bought it because 
Somebody loves to talk about this palette. I can't remember who, um, but they love this palette for the colorful shadows and because it's so affordable. It might be Danielle Schmidt. I can't remember. Anyway, look at this color selection. There's so many beautiful shades and this palette is so freaking affordable. I feel like even if I only like three of the shades, I'd be okay if this green one is like calling my name right now. So... I don't know. I don't know if I should keep this or just get rid of it because I have so many rainbow palettes. Let me know your thoughts if you own this palette. Is it worth dipping into or should I just give it away to somebody on my channel that would probably get way better use out of this because I know that I have subscriber friends that would probably enjoy this and don't buy as much makeup as I do. Okay, here's another untouched palette. This is the Persona Cosmetics Identity Palette. I bought this because it was on sale during one of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty and everyone on YouTube talks about how much they love this identity palette. I'm sure you guys have seen this in so many, so many people's eyeshadow palette collection videos. This couldn't look further away from my type of palette. So I don't know why I'm hanging on to this. I feel like I should just get rid of it. I feel like there's no point keeping it. It's so neutral. Ugh, I don't know, you guys. I've heard so many good things, but it just seems pointless keeping something I'm never going to get through. Okay, the next palette is this giant palette by Morphe, and this was totally inspired by Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. She basically talked about how much she loved this palette, and they painted this out to be, like, super limited edition, never coming back. And then, of course, Morphe, t true to its form, did restock this, so I totally bought it because I was like, well, why not? Lacey wouldn't lie to me, so here it is, and I don't know when I use this. But I thought maybe I'd keep it around again for prom or special occasion makeup. Here's another palette that was just like, a, oh my gosh, I can't believe I bought this thing. The packaging is so obnoxious. I do love the shades though. This is a Jeffree Star Alien palette and, you know, the greens just get to me. And I do like his ideas, like say what you want about the person. He still has some cool concepts. So yeah, I'm happy I have this. It's definitely different and, you know. It's a conversation starter. Okay, a couple of little drugstore palettes I bought because I was gonna put them on my channel, but obviously you guys probably already know you've never seen these on my channel. These are from Wet n Wild's, is this their summer collection, spring collection? I don't even remember. But it was like this rose themed palette and like collection of shades. So very dark and smoky and they're okay. I've never actually used all of them. I think I tried this one out once. Um, and it was okay. I don't know. I need to stop buying every drugstore thing that Wet n Wild comes out with because sometimes it's just not that good and then I just end up never using it. So yeah. <laughs> Next is my one and only Marc Jacobs palette. I feel like this one was a mistake for me as well because I've never really used this. This is their Scandalous palette and I picked it up during a Sephora VIB sale um, because everyone was raving about his formula a while ago but yeah, nobody's really talked about this in a while, and I just feel like I wasted a bunch of money buying this. Okay, if it's in the box, you can pretty much guess that I haven't used it yet. This is a Snow Angel. This is the Snow Angels palette that Dose re released, I think, for the holiday season, and then it went on like a really good sale. As you can see, I have never touched, swatched, or done anything with this. I love the colors, but I didn't want to pay the full price for this. So when I was able to get it on sale for like 19 bucks or something, I totally did. And I do want to use this on my channel channel sometime. I did buy the berry one and the browns when they first came out and I wasn't a fan of the formula but I'm hoping since this one is a little bit more newer they have a better matte formula in here so I will keep you guys posted. Okay here is the other BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. This is palette number one for the Zodiacs from them and I feel like this palette really kind of gave BH some clout with the beauty community because this was a good palette. I was definitely hesitant at first 
to buy it, but even the mattes in this palette are really beautiful, which is definitely not like BH. I feel like they've been known for their baked shadows for the longest time, but these mattes are creamy and delicious. So if you've been eyeing this one or any of the other Zodiac palettes, I would honestly recommend them, and I just think they're a really good deal. So here is the original Jaclyn Hill palette. I use this from time to time still, and it's a beautiful palette. If you see this in other people's collections, it definitely looks more well-loved than mine, but I I still do think this is a beautiful palette. It's very different from what you would find in the other Morphe 35 palette palettes. I feel like the quality is definitely much, much superior to the other 35 palettes and that's why I have kept this and I think it's good and I won't get rid of it. Here is the Anastasia Makeup by Mario collab palette. Again, a palette that I'm so glad I have because so many people wish Anastasia would bring this back. Um, I bought it when it originally launched because I love Makeup by Mario so much. And again, this is another palette I wish I got more use out of and hopefully I will. I've been really wanting the Biba palette by Natasha Denona, but I feel like this might be a good dupe for that and just has like neutral shades that I can play with. Okay, here is the Violet Voss Holy Grail palette. I used to be obsessed with Violet Voss, you guys, and since I've decluttered a lot of the palettes I used to own from them, and I kept this one. Actually, I think this might be on my Poshmark. I'm not sure, uh, but this is the one that has, you know, stuck around in my collection for the longest time, and I keep meaning to do a, like, throwback palette look with this. Just haven't, so <laughs> I'll keep you guys posted on if I ever get around to that. Here is my giant magic palette by Juvia's Place. I almost kind of want to declutter this and pick up the mini magic palette, but that seems like such a waste of money, so I'm just going to hold on to this one. But this is one of those Juvia's Place palettes that I feel like is so, so popular, and for good reason. It's got a nice color selection. If you're into color, I feel like you're going to love this palette if you don't already have it. Um, and I think Juvie Place is having a sale currently. So if they are on sale when this video goes up, you better check out some of these palettes I'm showing you. Because I also, like I had mentioned when I showed you the Tribe palette, I did declutter the ones I wasn't using. So the fact that I have this in my collection obviously means I still love it. Now I'm going to show you guys the Juvia's palettes I did keep. This is the Saharan by Juvia's Place. Oh my gosh, this was one of the first palettes that they launched that I like really was just like stunned by the color combo. I hadn't seen a red like this in a palette when this palette came out or this chartreuse shade. So it just had a lot of unique shades and I was very happy to own it. This one might end up on the chopping block in the next year or two. Um, I just don't use it enough and I don't want to just keep it. Here's another palette that I don't use enough. This is the Festival um, by Juvia's Place. Again, this red shade is one that attracts me to this palette. And of course this mustard, but I really don't use this one enough either. This one I don't see myself getting rid of. This is the Saharan. I love these shades in here, these foil bronzy shades. This blue shade is beautiful. It's just a stunning palette and I like the small size. This was one of those palettes I bought just to be a completionist. It's the Warrior palette. I, when this first launched, I told myself like, no, you're not going to use this. You have so many palettes like this. But then I was like, oh, I should get it so that I have all the Juvia's Place palettes. And since they released the all matte a warrior palette. I'm like, nope, I'm not just gonna buy shit like this anymore. So this one will probably be on the chopping block this year or next year like the other palette I pointed out. The douche used to be my favorite Juvia's until the tribe palette came along. I love wearing pinks in my crease and on my lid. I just love pink eyeshadow with my complexion. So I love this palette and I wanna do a throwback with this as well. And then here is another palette that doesn't get enough love for me, but I see this in a lot of people's videos as well. Um, this is the Zulu palette. It's like a colorful palette, except they threw this brown in here, which is like a neutral transition shade. So it really threw me off. Like I wish they had done another matte shade that you could just use as a transition. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting 
shade selection for that palette. Um, but yeah, I'm not getting rid of this because it's a fun, colorful palette. Okay, here is the BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette. This came out last year during festival season. Another fun, revolutionary palette for BH Cosmetics. They really hadn't done something like this with the pretty packaging and stuff um, for a while because usually they do like weird cheap packaging. So I think this was a good addition at the time to their lineup and I like this a lot. Here is a palette I thought I would never get rid of but I feel like maybe the formula is going a little bit weird. I need to do a throwback with this palette as well just because I bought this right before it went on sale and was in the process of being discontinued by Urban Decay. Um, and I feel like this is the last good Urban Decay palette that came out, but um, it's a lot of bright colors and this packaging, one of the best, I would say. And it looks so cute with my neon nails. Okay, here is the Hive palette from Lethal. This is the one I was talking about when I showed you guys the other palette I have from them. So beautiful, these shades are gorgeous. I did like a review roundup of some eyeshadow palettes I had tried out and included this one in there. So if you haven't checked out that video, just watch my reviews playlist because all my eyeshadow palette reviews are in there. And yeah, this is just a cute little palette. And again, I really like Lethal Cosmetics. Here is a palette I used one time in a Get Ready With Me. This is the Rendezvous palette by ColourPop. This blue shade was calling to me when I first saw it and I had a 20% off coupon at Ulta. This palette first came out exclusively to Ulta and then they added it to the ColourPop website, I believe. So yeah, I bought it. I shouldn't have bought this because I really didn't need a palette like this in my collection, but it's like the story of my life, right? Here is a palette that I featured in a Angelica Made Me Buy It video. This is the Misha Lu Witchcraft palette because it was so hard to buy green palettes back in the day and this was like the first palette I saw that was this color combination. Misha Lu is a UK based indie brand and so I paid a lot of money to get this here and I really like it and I like the shimmers. They're very buttery and beautiful. But of course, since this palette launched, there's been so many other green palettes. So I don't really find myself reaching for this one too much. I do have two palettes from Alamar Cosmetics. This is the first one. Um, this is the one that everyone was raving about on YouTube last year. It was in so many people's 2018 favorites videos. So I was like, well, I needed two. And so I bought it. And honestly, I was in that jazz with it. I don't know if people just liked it because they got it for free. Or not for free, but like they got a good deal on it from their BoxyCharm. But I wasn't that impressed with these shadows. And then this is part two. And I had been eyeing the first one for so long that they were coming out with the second one. So I just decided to wait and buy both together. And uh, I'm equally not obsessed with either of these. So I feel like these are going to be on the um, chopping block this year. These are kind of like eyeshadow palette memories. I don't use these on my eyes anymore. This is an Urban Decay palette. This is the first Urban Decay eyeshadow palette I ever bought. As you can see, I actually hit pan on eyeshadow palettes back in the day uh, when I wasn't buying like two a week. So I just like to keep this to uh, remind myself of uh, my makeup loving roots. And then this is the palette I wore on my wedding day. This is the Makeup Geek Manny palette. As you can see, again, this one does have some good, you know, pan. Not pan, but like I've made a few dents in it. Not really, but for me, this is like stunning accomplishment that there's like little divots in some of these shimmer shades. I don't really use this on my eyes either. I don't think this would have gone off yet. These shades just don't excite me as much so I just kind of keep it around to hold on to the memories but don't really use it that much. This one is one of my older Anastasia palettes. This is the World Traveler palette. I'm obsessed with the shade Pink Champagne and I was gonna try and get rid of this for the longest time but I decided I would just hold on to it and save it as a makeup memory so there it is and then this is my first ever palette or one of my first ever palettes this was gifted to me my my best friend for her birthday this is the original naked palette RIP I don't put this on my eyes anymore but as you can see I've hit some pan here which is pretty impressive and I could not I could not deal with this palette, the re, what, the revamped version? What did they call it? The Naked Reloaded? Oh my gosh, I bought it. When it first launched, it just invoked so much feeling. 
um, that I wanted to buy it and just like relive the moment where I had gotten this palette, but honestly, it did not go according to plan and I swiftly returned that palette. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna hold on to this one and uh, be thankful for the memories. Here is a palette I bought a long, long time ago and only recently tried out. This is the Pinky Rose Bright Lights palette. I tried this out on a collab with my friend Nadia here on YouTube and that makeup look did not turn out so great. Uh, so I'm a little bit scarred from that and I feel like this is gonna be one of those palettes that's gonna end up on the chopping block this year as well. I don't really like their formula. It's a very um, thin formula. I prefer my mattes to be really like emollient and blendable where this one is a very thin formula and I think it will work better for packing. Um, so yeah, because of that reason, I don't see myself keeping this palette for much longer in my collection. Okay, this palette is kind of cool. I got this as a Christmas gift from my husband's stepsister, and I guess Urban Decay was having an event at one of our Ulta stores, and not one of our, we only have one Ulta store, at our Ulta store, and so she had them custom paint it for me, which I think is really cool. This is one of my favorite Urban Decay palettes as well, the Moondust palette. This one is unused. I usually, oh, it feels kind of hard. It's pretty. See, I think my friend Paulina Beauty just bought this last year and she was like obsessed with it too. This one works really great with glitter glue. And it's just like one of the first palettes I think that just had like these very um, impactful shimmers. And so I'm never getting rid of this because I had this palette. I sold the one I had because I got this one brand new and obviously for sentimental reasons I wanted to keep the one that was customized for me. Here is the Berries and a Cream palette by Dominique Cosmetics. Again, the completionist in me made me want to buy this even though I wasn't really jazzed about the shade selection. I feel like this is like a toned down version of the Latte palette and honestly I don't even use this one that much so I'm really not into it and I shouldn't have bought it, but I did because I'm a Psycho Pants and now it's just sitting in my collection. Okay, one of my favorite ColourPop palettes, the Good Sport palette. Again, this is one of those palettes I wish I could love on more because it's so good. The formula, the shade selections, I love it so much. This came out last year around the holidays. And then I have the Makeup Shayla palette. This is the Perception palette. This was one of those two where I didn't really want it, but I was like, oh, it's ColourPop, so I must buy it. So I bought it, like a drone, and I like don't ever use it. Here is the original. It's my Ray Ray palette from BH Cosmetics. This one has seen some good action, if you ask me. Like, you can tell I used it, and I really liked it. So I'm gonna hold on to it for a little bit longer. I have seen this palette at my local Marshalls. And I think you can get it for like seven bucks. So if you have had your eye on this and you are a person with a medium to deep skin tone, I think you would really like this palette. Okay, here are my little ColourPop palettes. I don't know if you can buy any of these anymore, but I'll just show them to you really quick. This is the Make Up Your Mind palette, the Take Me Home palette, and the Pretty Much palette. And these are all super cute and I'm keeping all of them. And then I have my favorite neutral palette from ColourPop. This is the I Think I Love You palette. I took this traveling with me in 2018 when I went on a work trip and I really, really loved it. So I will not be getting rid of it. This is their holiday palette from 2018. This is a Chasing Rainbows palette. This was another one where it's like, I really didn't want this palette, but I'm like a drone programmed to buy ColourPop makeup and so I did. This one I was genuinely excited about. This is the Ooh La La palette by ColourPop. It's their pink themed palette. I actually really like these nine pan palettes. I know um, some people don't love all the colors they've been coming out with, but I like the brown, I like the pink, I like the green, so no complaints from me. And I actually like this plastic packaging. I know people say it's like really cheap, but I like that it's the color of what's inside. I think that's really cute. Okay, here is the Dream Street palette. I do like the shades in this, but I don't really use it enough, but I want to keep it around because I feel like there's enough neutrals. Again, if I need to do wedding makeup or prom makeup, I could reach for this palette. This one, again, was one of those palettes where I didn't really need it, but I bought it because I'm a savage. <laughs> I'm a savage, get it? Um, but I think this is gonna end up being decluttered as well. This is their collab with Becky G. And then here is the Princess palette. They came out in collab with Disney. A boring ass palette. I think I've maybe used this once or twice. I accidentally tried to use the gold and the silver together and that's why the silver got on the gold, but 
cute packaging. And then here are my two palettes from Strobe Cosmetics. Strobe Cosmetics is an indie brand. I bought the Creepy Cute palette because all of my friends liked it, but I have a feeling that this works better on Caucasian skin tones than my skin tone. I can't speak for every dark person that ever existed, obviously, because everyone is different. But on me, I feel like these just blended away. So just be warned if you are planning on picking that up and you are my skin tone. And then this is the Divinity palette. And I think it's honestly really beautiful, but again, it was one of those things where I bought it and I never did anything with it. So it's just kind of sitting around, but I do think it's beautiful. I, I will still review it for you guys if you're interested, even though it's been like almost half a year since this came out. Okay, this is Sephora's collab with Moschino. I pretty much used this like one time for a video and now it's just a makeup memory. It's cute packaging and now they're doing round two so it'll be interesting to see how that is received but yep there it is it's a cute little shopping bag and then i have a bunch of drugstore stuff so let's not take too long this is the milani palette i got some wet and wild um palettes these are from recent launches and then this is their original comfort zone palette so I have all of those from Wet n Wild, this Milani, and then this Milani All Matte. I bought the Milani ones because Makeup Struggles was raving about them, but I never use them. And then this is the Mad for Matte Jewel Pop palette from e.l.f. Um, the pigmentation on this is honestly really good. I was going to get rid of this, but I was like, you know what? It's a really good palette for drugstore, so I decided to keep that, but I think I might get rid of some of these other ones. So, yep. And then here is the Viseart um, Neutral Mattes Palette. This was my first ever Viseart. No, I bought the dark mattes first, but regretted it instantly and decided to buy this one as well. There is newer packaging um, for these palettes, but I'm not going to buy another freaking palette just to have the better packaging. These are like 80 bucks a piece, so I'm very happy with this. I can use this on eyebrows. You can use this to bronze. You can use this to set somebody's under eye like... These palettes are meant for makeup artists and they're damn good. Okay, these are some newer drugstore palettes I just picked up and filmed a swatch party video. These are from the brand Profusion. So this is like a rainbow palette. I have this shimmer one and this one called the Sapphires. And these were all five bucks and I've heard some good things about this brand. So excited to review these for you. Next are some more affordable palettes. These are all from the brand Rimmel. I went a little extra on these and oh, yeah, these are different. They look so similar. Anyway, um, I've only used one of these, the Crimson. It was really good. And so I want to do some type of video with these, but I haven't figured out what yet. And they're here. And yeah, they basically ended up costing me the price of like a fancy eyeshadow palette when I bought them all. But you know. Okay, here's another palette I bought because I heard so many good things from Miss... Tina, the fancy face. It's the Jouer holiday palette and it's like supposed to be super foiled and they, they were selling these for like 15 bucks by the end of the year last year or maybe this year and so I bought one for me and because I didn't want to pay shipping I bought one for you guys so there will definitely be you know a palette like this in an upcoming giveaway um gives you more reasons to subscribe I guess <laughs> here's another set of palettes that came out last year that I don't really love the formula and then I never really use like this purple palette is untouched and the pink one I did try a few times. I wasn't jazzed about it, which is why I haven't touched the purple one. And I also tried the blue one because it's a colorful palette. And again, I wasn't very excited by the colors and how they applied. And then here's the classic, which I've also tried and wasn't really jazzed about. So I think I might try and give these one more shot. Otherwise, they're definitely going to be on the chopping block this year. Here's to palettes so you're not going to see a lot of indie brands in my palette video because indie brands typically do a lot of single shadows and i do have a lot of single shadows from the brand cleonade but they also came out with two palettes so this is the archaeo palette this is the one they came out with i believe last year or maybe 2017 and uh, they did a lookbook with angelica on this one and i again use this on a collab video with my friend nadia and then this is the paleo palette i don't think i've ever used this one they hand make these palettes 
and they're just so cool so I definitely want to make a video on these guys but yeah very cool very different and very unique palettes here's another vault that I picked up and it never made it on my channel because I wasn't so jazzed about the formula these were the pinky rose palettes I don't remember what their whole set was called maybe the trilogy potentially <laughs> and I don't know all my friends were so excited about this palette that these palettes that I bought them but then I just never really used them after I did a swatch party video this one is definitely my favorite so I might leave this one out so I can at least try the formula and decide if I'm gonna keep these or not but yeah kind of kind of a bad purchase on my part again okay here is miss james charles's palette i actually got this as a birthday gift this year and my sweet sweet old co-worker that i basically consider my second mom bought me this so cute she was actually picking this up for her like 16 year old daughter so i totally feel flattered that she thought of me um when she was buying this but i really love this i haven't done anything with it really i think i dipped into this green shade one time when i was doing some kind of other eye look but I want to do like a full review and swatch it with this palette so let me know if you guys are interested in seeing this palette on my channel okay here is Miss Jeffree Star's blood sugar palette you guys know this is my favorite Jeffree Star palette somebody told me to open them with the hinges but this palette is freaking hard to open you guys oh my god there it is it's so beautiful again I need to play with this more as well but it's got it's really nice. I wish they hadn't done this packaging though, but you know, you can only complain so much. This is the I Love Sarah E collab with ColourPop. I was never going to buy this palette, but then I had a bad day, maybe a bad week. I don't know. And I bought it on um, ColourPop. So it's nice. I feel like this green shade was the most exciting shade in the palette and everything else was kind of meh. Um, so I kind of wish I hadn't bought it and spent the money on it and I can totally see myself getting rid of this palette eventually. Here is a newer palette to my collection. This is Miss Jeffree Star's Blue Blood palette and I filmed a look with this. I've used it like three or three times maybe. Uh, I'm still on the fence about this one. It's tough to use. There's quite a bit of fallout. I don't know if I would recommend this to a beginner. I don't think it's like a beginner palette. Like I don't feel like if you're a beginner in makeup, this palette is going to scream to you. I feel like the James Charles palette has more beginner appeal. But uh, in case you're on the fence about this, I would uh, definitely proceed with caution because this palette is tough. Okay, here is the other ColourPop palette that came out at Ulta first. This is the Sweet Nothings palette. It's a beautiful palette. Is this like life-changing, earth-shattering? No, I literally bought it because it was on sale and... That is not a good reason to buy a palette. <laughs> okay, here is another favorite palette of mine from ColourPop. This is the Nine Pan. It's my pleasure palette. I didn't think I would like this. Honestly, I talk so much shit about this palette because I have that little purple palette from them. And when I got it, it was so buttery and gorgeous that I'm so freaking happy I have this. So if you even want this palette a little bit, wait until it goes on sale and then buy this sucker because it's gorgeous. Okay, here is the new festival collection from BH Cosmetics. This is the Colorful Color Festival palette. They had just launched this. I have been trying this out. This shade really doesn't show up on me. Um, the shimmers are a little bit hard pressed, kind of different for BH Cosmetics. Um, but I wore this shade the other day with some singles from Gimme Glow and it turned out gorgeous. So yeah, definitely gonna keep playing with this. And again, it matches my nails. How cute is that? Okay, here's one of the controversial palettes of 2019. Tarte, of course. This is their Icy Betch palette. I totally bought this on a whim, guys. Mostly as a joke. And I don't think it's horrible. I haven't worn this on my eyes yet, but I did a bunch of swatches comparing this to the Sydney Grace No Joke Bundle. And it didn't do so bad. Like, I was expecting not a whole lot from this, and the price point is amazing, 25 bucks. Like, for a blue eyeshadow palette, I feel like that's a good deal. If you're afraid, afraid of color, this might be the way to go. Okay, here's some little mini guys. These are from Huda. These are her Gemstone Obsessions palettes. She came out with five of these. I didn't buy Topaz because it was basically a boring palette, uh, but these are kind of like a little bit ahead of their time because ColourPop only started releasing their monochromatic palettes like last couple of years whereas these came out I think in 2017 
correct me if I'm wrong, but here is the amethyst. We have the ruby. I actually ended up liking the amethyst and the ruby the most. I thought I would like the emerald, but I don't love the greens in here. I like these two green shades, but everything else is kind of like muted and cool toned in my opinion. And this blue one looks beautiful, but the shades are not the greatest quality. So I don't love that about those two, but I did end up really liking the red and the purple. Would also like to do some kind of throwback situation with these guys. So cute. Okay guys, let's talk about the most expensive part of my eyeshadow collection. Obviously you guys know it's my Pat McGrath palettes. Oh my God. I finally just wrote like the little notes on what these were because you can't really tell them apart. And I don't know like that Sublime is this and this is that. So I just wrote like different colors on here. Um, this is the fourth Mothership. This is a limited edition palette. So you can't get this one anymore. But she just came out with singles. And I believe most of the singles were the shades from this palette. I prefer to buy Pat McGrath in palette form. Definitely don't want her singles. But yeah, these are gorgeous, you guys. I honestly recommend them all. I know people think they're overpriced and overhyped. But I think those people are wrong and should... <laughs> should really pick up a palette and try it but this is the one of the originals she came out with so gorgeous these special shades are so freaking stunning here is the latest Pat McGrath palette this is bronze ambition I think oh my god these special shades are gorgeous I have swatch party videos of all of these palettes if you just look at my playlist called Pat McGrath you'll be able to find it this shade you guys these palettes are no joke I swear Natasha Denona's got nothing on Pat McGrath I promise you gorgeous so gorgeous so heavy these things probably weigh like a good 20 pounds okay maybe 10 okay guys I think we made it to the end I scoured most of my drawers where I keep my eyeshadow palettes and I didn't see anything else if I forgot to mention something it is what it is but I want to do collection videos more often I just feel like they're so long. I enjoy watching them. I don't know how many of you do. So if you made it to the end or made it to here, leave me like a heart emoji or just leave me a comment because you guys know that will be awesome. So here are the other Profusion palettes. I picked these up actually first around the holidays when Target was carrying these palettes and I even like put them away in a section of like film this video. And I've gotten so many other palettes since that I've just been putting it off and putting it off. So I don't know if I should just do giveaways with these. We'll see. I'm definitely more interested in this one, um, which is the Temptress. And it's gorgeous. So maybe I'll get to these. I don't know. And then I just picked this up the other day from my Marshalls here in Fargo they're actually now on clearance can you believe that so I paid 20 bucks for them and I went in there yesterday and they were on sale for like $14.99 and I was like kicking myself for buying it like literally a couple of days prior but this is a new subculture palette I saw Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips compared this to her original subculture and she felt like the formula had been updated to the old ABH formula which when the subculture came out was a new ABH formula and everybody hated it and I honestly was hoping they would update the formula because I feel like I would really like these colors if they were in the like Norvina and the soft glam and the modern renaissance formula so I'm really hoping that's what it is otherwise it'll swiftly get decluttered to my Poshmark but yeah I just got that and I'm kind of excited about it not gonna lie and the very last palette in my palette collection video is this one this is so special to me this is from the brand Amy Hearts Beauty and it's their Galactic Phenom palette I'm not sure if this was their first ever eyeshadow palette but I did receive this in PR and this is what it looks like it is honestly such a beautiful palette my black shade kind of shattered I think it was a little bit overfilled the pan was so it's kind of been making a mess but you guys this palette these shimmers swatch so beautifully this is definitely a grungier palette that I'm used to um, but this was gifted to me and I just wanted to put it at the end because it's the first ever thing I really got in PR from a brand like reaching out to me and I'm really appreciative of that so yeah this is my last palette I feel like I have I don't know. I got palettes everywhere. I could do a count. I've always wanted to like create like a spreadsheet 
and like track my palettes, but I, it never happens because I'm always like cycling things in and out of my collection. So it's so hard for me to keep track of it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, I definitely need you to comment down below if you made it through this entire video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye.